Welcome to the This Week in Golf podcast, and it is the PGA Championship preview show. It's the day before. Today is Thursday. We've got live players, the PGA players, club pros, and of course, Michael Block. Y'all remember Michael Block from last year? The feel-good story of the year in golf. Well, he, he, he did good enough last year to qualify for this year, so he's back. Maybe he can make some more money. I don't know if he'll be able to do what he did last year, but it was pretty exciting, the hole-in-one. and It's interesting. We I have a saying. We call it a Michael Block par. So if you're on a par four and like you hit a crappy drive and you hit a crappy second shot and you're like 130 yards away and then you hit it on the green and make the putt for par, we call that a Michael Block par because that's what he did all last year at the PGA Championship on those 500-yard par fours. You couldn't reach them. So... Uh, I don't know. Let's see how he does. But yeah, excited to see all the players together. And there's been some press conferences going on with the Live guys. Tiger was up there. All the PGA guys. Not too much information given about the merger and what's happening. We'll get into that in a little bit. But kicking it off, let's talk about Rory McIlroy. Rory won last weekend. He, uh, wow. Wow. He, he, I think he was down two going into Sunday to Xander Shoffley, and Roy ran away with it. Ended up winning by four or five strokes, and, you know, a lot happening in the world for Rory, <laughs> to say the least, in case you haven't been following it. He also filed for a divorce this week, and, uh, I, I mean, no wonder he's got so much energy. He's probably getting some now, you know, getting some, some new stuff. So that'll motivate a man to start winning again. And um, he was the first person to come out and stand up for the tour. And then they kind of like kicked him off the board. They don't want him on the board. And then now this week he's coming back. So or he wanted to come back onto the board and uh, they didn't let him. Tiger and, the, and uh, his crew <laughs> said, no, thanks, Rory. So Rory took some like job. Like, I don't know. He's like on some committee. He doesn't have a vote. So I don't know why he wants that job or wants to be involved. Maybe it's like it's like a discovery committee and it has something to do with finance as well. I should know the name, but I don't. He um, but that committee, maybe maybe he's got some like hidden power on that committee. You know what I mean? Like he can veto stuff before it even gets up the line. Not likely, but maybe maybe that's why he. He wants to be involved. But anyways, he also recommitted to the PGA Tour. He said that, you know, he'll he'll be on the tour for life. He has no interest in going to live and blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. But he is getting divorced. So you never know. I don't think he's going to need the money. But I don't think that the ex would be entitled to the new money he would get from live. That's for sure. So anyways, but yeah, Tiger, Tiger and those guys, they, did, they didn't want him involved and it's interesting what's happening with all that because you know what is going on with the merger it's been a year since they announced the the agreement to make an agreement almost a year 11 months they decided to we're going to stop suing each other the the PIF the live Saudi league and the PGA we're going to stop suing each other we're going to make a deal and the head guy that was involved in that was his fellow Jimmy Dunn and he just quit this week he basically had a resignation letter that more or less said, you know, the players have the control now, which is something I pointed out months ago when when Tiger finally got involved with the board. You know, there was there's a 12 person. I mean, it's just simple math, folks. There's a 12 person board. Six are players and six are I don't know. They're not players. We'll call them executives. They're executives. And one of them quit. He's like, I can't go forward with this because I don't want to make a deal and with the Saudis and blah, blah, blah. So he quit, one of the executives. And the players filled that spot with a player. So now you have five executives and seven players. Simple math. So the players do have control. And in particular, Tiger and Tiger's agent. And I think Tiger's, I forget the other guy's name, but they, Tiger put one of his kind of business advisors into a position as well on the board. 
I don't think it's a voting position, but it has power. So that's what's happening. And then when they asked Tiger, Spieth, Justin Thomas this week, what's going on with the deal? All of them gave just canned answers. You know, we want to make a deal, blah, blah, blah. But it's all in secret. They're not being out front about it. And so, you know, as we sit here going into the PGA Championship, this week will be good, but all the other tournaments are suffering across the board. Viewership is down with golf. It's all secretive. So it doesn't seem like they want to make a deal or they want to play the waiting game. And um, who knows? The PGA Tour is, in my opinion, is not handling this business situation very well. You know, they have, they, they're, hang on. Well, I'm going to move to that topic in a few minutes. Still talking about the PGA Championship. Anyways, Rory. Then the other hot guy on the PGA Tour is obviously Scotty Scheffler. Won the Masters. I think he's won four or five times this year. He's made some ridiculous amount of money, almost $20 million this year so far. And, you know, we're only a third of the way into the season here. But Scheffler and his wife just had a baby, their first baby. And so let's see, you know, how's he going to do now that he's got the baby? Is he getting less sleep? They asked Tiger, you know, what advice would you give to Scotty Scheffler as a new dad? And he said, get some sleep. I would have said, get a night nurse. Get somebody there so you can sleep all night to take care of that baby in the middle of the night. Come on. Jeez. Simple advice. Get some sleep. Get a night nurse. If you have the means, get somebody to take care of the baby at night. What? What are we missing here? Anyways, I believe I'm gonna. I if I had to bet on Rory or Scotty Scheffler this week, I would take Rory. I like a guy who's a little scorned out of a relationship, and and you know, getting some new women as opposed to a guy that's up all night taking care of a baby. And you know, hey, no shame on that. That's a great experience for him and his family and all that. But, you know, a lot of a lot of added stress. So I'm taking the divorced, divorced dad as opposed to the new dad in this one. Let's talk the live players and some live news. What's going on there? So Brooks Kepcha, Kepka won the Live Singapore event last week. So he's coming off a win and he's hot at the right time. And... Liv has, they, they did two events. They did an event in Australia, and then they did an event in Singapore. So back-to-back weeks, they kind of, you know, global game. They're the global tour now. So they go do an event in Australia. Everybody flies up the coast. Uh, it's more than flying up the coast, but they fly probably up seven, hour, seven hours, and then they go to Singapore to play an event. So, um and then, and then in that same event, Cam Smith got second. So Cam Smith's been playing pretty well. He did play well at the Masters as well. I know he was like eight shots behind, but I think he was top five, maybe sixth place at the Masters. So he's been having a good season. And then, of course, there's John Rahm. And all John Rahm does is get top tens every week and live. And, you know, live doesn't have a lot of events, so... Um, they're playing like two events a month, maybe. And so Rom's playing pretty well. And he had some interesting comments this week um, <laughs> at the podium. He said something to the effect of, well, I'm still a PGA player. They just won't let me play here. And then all the folks on the Golf Channel were like, oh, God, he's, he's the guy that left and he's splintering the game and <laughs> all the stupid things they say. But John Rahm is, uh, made a funny point about that, you know, I'm just a suspended player, and the only reason you suspended me is because I went to play somewhere else. But PGA is a closed shop. If you're either playing for them or you're not. So that's how they're rolling. Um, the other thing with, um, with Liv, again, covered it before, but seems to be kind of more coming to fruition is this, um, the teams are going to, have home courses, and they're going to have academies. So they're going to run them like a European soccer club kind of model. If you think about that, the the Euro soccer club model is you have a stadium, the main team, Manchester United, plays there, or Barcelona, and they have an academy where they have, you know, an under-20 team, an under-19 team, an under-18 team, and right on down the line, 
and they're looking for talent to bring on to these teams probably when they're 10, 12 years old. They have schools there so they can coach them up. And that's really what's going to start happening with these live teams. Probably not right away, but in the next five years, they're going to have a home course with a practice facility and they're going to recruit players in. And that'll also probably include some sort of education facility as well. So you have everybody on site, you have trainers, you have, you, you know, like trainers like uh, weights and biometrics, <laughs> biometrics, biometrics. That's funny. Um, yeah, so that's what's going with live. And then, you know, just the state of golf overall, like viewership is down, ratings are down. Um, the golf channel only covers the PGA tour and sometimes, you know, some of the other tours as well, but why don't they cover live? Like, come on, your ratings are down. Like you're not even covering half of this, half of the sport. And again, PGA is a closed shop. And if you want to deal with the PGA, which the golf channel has, you probably cannot report on live. Right. But the average age what do, you, what do you think is the average age of a person that watches the PGA Tour on television? Average age person that watches the PGA Tour on television is over 70 years old. Over 70 years old. I think it's like 72. And live, there's not as many people watching, granted, but there's something like in the 40s, average age. So no one's watching. Ratings are down. Not as many people are going to live events. And the demographic of PGA is, is it's old people. I'm not, I'm no spring chicken. So I think I can comment on the old folks. And, um, and so if you're going to grow the game, how are you going to grow the game? It's got to be through younger people. And where are the younger people? Well, they're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. And where are the PGA players not? Right. None of them. None of them. They, they, there is no player presence on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, any social media. Very little. Very little. And the channels that the PGA is running, the social channels are a joke. You know, they're like, they're not entertaining. Like, who are the most entertaining people on those social platforms? Mr. Beast. People like that. Right. I don't even know because I don't follow a lot of that, but we, you know, that's where the younger people are. That's where the eyeballs are. And you won't allow your players to be on there because you control, it's close shop. You play for us. We control the media rights. You can't have your caddy make a uh, Instagram reel on a Wednesday at a practice round and put it on your Instagram page. That won't fly. It won't fly. So that is one of the main issues. I think that I've always said that's one of the main issues that why people left because they didn't have control of their name, image, and likeness. Yeah, they can get a commercial with Morgan Stanley and all of that, which is fine, but they can't even like put videos on social media without the PGA Tour looking over them. And so look, like, look at a guy like Bryson DeChambeau and what he's doing, right? He's building streaming channels, right? On He's mainly doing YouTube, but he's on the other other ones as well. And why is he being successful? Well, one, he has the time because they gave him the money. He got the money from Liv, so he has the extra time to do it. And he's not playing as much golf. So he's got the time and money to hire people to film him and create the content or help him create the content. Liv allows him to create the content. And then he's got the other thing that he's doing. It's, you know, probably the biggest difference in the world is he's being honest with the audience and, and with the videos he's making. And by that, I mean, like, look at these guys in a press conference, any pro golfer. It's canned answers, canned answers. You know, it's like they, they're, they're, they're not given anything. They're not given an inch on anything as far as an answer goes. But Bryson's just in there being honest and he takes a lot of criticism and heat for it because, you know, he's he's doing what he wants to do. I mean, he's creating his own golf clubs. He's got these 3D printed golf clubs now and. You know, he's using this driver, the crank driver, which is a long, which is what all the long drive drive guys hit. And, um, you know, he's he's committed to growing his he, he's got this goal of growing the game from, you know, bringing 
millions of people onto the game and, and he's going to do it through his YouTube channel. And so that's what he's trying to do. Now, whether you like him, whether you hate him, whether you agree with it or not, at least he's doing something to try to improve the situation and get more people watching golf. And, you know, a lot of people say grow the game. Everybody says grow the game, but he's actually doing something about it. So, you know, it's like one of the videos he made, he, he put a microphone on for the entire round. And so you can go watch that video on his YouTube channel. Just him playing golf and talking to his caddy. But that's like the easiest low-hanging fruit that you could improve the broadcast with if you're the PGA Tour. Or live for that matter. Um, you know, and like, I'll give you a perfect example. Like, during the Masters, like, after the Masters, all your broadcasters on YouTube and, and the channels, they, they were talking smack about Dustin Johnson, about how he doesn't care anymore, um, how he got the money from Liv, and he had a bad Masters, no doubt about it. And they were like, oh, he just mailed it in, you know. <laughs> but then it, it, it's so lazy. The guy won a live event like three weeks before that. During the Super Bowl, he won the live event in Las Vegas. So do you think he didn't care then? Do you think, like, he's got some ridiculous record where he's won, I think it's almost 20 years now. He's won an event every year. And since going over to live, the three years he's been there, he's won an event every year. It's one of the greatest players in the game, you know, still going over there, still winning tournaments. And people are saying, oh, he's mailed it in. Now, I'm sure if he had a microphone on him during the Masters, you probably wouldn't have that uh, feeling that he mailed it in. Although, who knows, maybe on the last day on Friday when he wasn't going to make the cut, he said something like, let's just get on the plane and go to the next place, right? But, yeah, I, I just feel like with everything going on in golf and live and the fractured game and all that, this is like one of the great weeks that we have to celebrate now as golf fans. You know, all the players coming together to play an event the PGA Championship and the Masters, the U.S. Opens. Hopefully the U.S. Open will get it together and have a lot of special invites for the live players. And as I said before, the easiest thing they can do to sort it all out is if you've won a live event in the last calendar year, give them an invite. It's it's as simple as that. Because in because a, a lot of those live guys have won U.S. Opens and they still have qualifications. So anybody that's won a live, live event, uh, Taylor Gooch who the PGA actually is allowing in, Dean Burmeister, uh, Joaquin Neiman, allow all these people in. Anyways, we will catch up next week and we'll review what happened. Can't wait to see how it all transpires. Hey, it's Jeremy Callahan and thanks for listening to This Week in Golf. Make sure and hit subscribe so you can get all the latest news and analysis from Golf VPN.